problem two. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them to the end.
An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. There will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests.
the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Please be seated. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That psalm I'm sure you all recognize was written by King David. David who began as a shepherd right here in Bethlehem. A shepherd just like me. Good evening. It's a cold evening, isn't it? It's about the only day in the whole year that people wish that it would snow. And it did, didn't it? A cold evening like this reminds me of another cold evening a while back. 
I and my fellow shepherds were out here in the meadow taking care of our sheep. It was cold then too, and we were warming our hands around the fire. I was working the night shift. Shepherds don't really like to work the night shift. That's where trouble begins. Wolves, lions, sometimes a thief comes along trying to take a lamb or a sheep. The staff that I hold in my hand isn't just for show. When I see a wolf come sneaking along, I use this to hit his head and chase him away. I take care of my sheep. It was on that kind of cold day that we talked about what was happening, the things that were taking place in our little world. Caesar Augustus, the Roman Empire, had declared a census. Oh, we knew exactly what that was all about. He wasn't interested in how many people there were in the Roman Empire. He wanted to count heads so he could collect taxes better. I suppose things really don't change. Governments are always trying to pick our pockets. And we didn't particularly like Augustus picking our pocket, taking our money so that he could rule us all the better. But what can you do? That's life, isn't it? Here in Bethlehem, we remember another king a benevolent king, King David. We remember that he was the greatest king of all, our hero. But those days have gone by. Bethlehem now is still a small town. Here, standing by the gates, we can watch all the people coming for the census, all those people, descendants of David, coming to register for that census up the road towards Jerusalem, about five miles. Along this road is Rachel's tomb. Rachel was the favorite wife of Jacob, also a shepherd, I might add, the patriarch of our country and of our people. And so it was on that night, as we talked about taxes and government and all the woes that we had to face, warming our hands, trying to stay warm, Suddenly, there was this great light. Not, not like dawn that creeps in very slowly, but like a flash, a great light. It scared us. In fact, we threw ourselves down on the dirt. We didn't know what was going on, what was happening. And then, a gentle voice. A voice that said, do not be afraid. But of course we were. We were terrified. We were scared out of our minds. We had never seen such a thing. And as we hid our eyes, trying to hide from what we were so afraid of, the voice continued. It said, For to you this day, in the city of David, is born Savior. A Savior. The Messiah. The Christ. The one whom God had promised for so many centuries. The Savior. We speak of him. We, we long for him. We wondered if God would keep his promise. And now that angel said for you, this day the Savior is born. And then the angel said something else. Uh, this will be a sign to you, he said. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Boy, did that seem odd. A manger, a feeding trough? Why that? We puzzled over that, still trying to hide our eyes. The brightness was so much. It's sort of like, you know, when you're sleeping in your bed in your room and your mother turns on the light and you can't stand that 
sight and you hide your face in the pillow. There we were, we're still afraid and we're still hiding. And then, just as suddenly, no more light. The angels had spoken, the crowd of voices had sung out glory to God in the highest. And now it was ended. No light, no sound. We struggled to our feet wondering where had it all gone? What had happened? We looked up into the sky, the sky that is night now, and we saw the the stars that once were so bright, now seeming so dull. And we still seem to vibrate from the beautiful music that we were hearing, the sound going out and expanding, rolling off the hills on both sides, down into our meadow, touching our hearts. Such beautiful music, more beautiful than anything we ever heard in Jerusalem, in the temple, the angels had spoken. We got up, we dusted ourselves, we looked at each other, we didn't have to say anything. Let's go to Bethlehem. And so we ran towards the city, running across the terraced hills, going to the city, looking for that stable, because, of course, that's where mangers are. How many of you have a a feeding trough in your house. No, it had to be a stable. And so we looked, and because we are shepherds, we know where most of the stables are. We looked here and there, not finding anything, until finally we, we spotted over there a grotto carved into the limestone, a stable, and two people, Mary and Joseph, we found out later that they had come far from the north, way past Jerusalem, Nazareth. It seems that they came to register for the census. I suppose at least there was one good thing that came out of that census. They came down so that the child, David's son, could be born in David's town. And there he was, just as the angel had said, wrapped in cloths, lying in a feeding trough. We bent down to worship him. I want to tell you that that child did not wear purple like kings wear, and there was no bodyguards like King Herod has to have all the time, and the child did not wear a crown on its head. In fact, this child looked like well, look like any other newborn child, like one that could be born in Bethlehem or one born in Jerusalem or perhaps in your country as well. Just a very ordinary child. And in fact, we thought to ourselves, we would never have found him except for the fact that the angels had told us where to look to find this child, the Savior, the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord himself. And then it struck us, we are probably the first to come here, the first to see our Savior. Now, you know, shepherds are not very gabby people. We spend long hours by ourselves. But boy, did we talk that night. We went out into Bethlehem, and we talked to people, and we said, go, see the Christ child, he is there. The angels told us that he is the Savior. Go and see him. Some looked at us and smiled and hurried away, not in that direction. They thought us lunatics, I think. They didn't want any such news from smelly shepherds. But there were others who heard what we said, and then they went to see the Christ child themselves. All were amazed by what we had to say. Some went, some didn't. I think to myself, what will this child do? How will he handle 
the kind of enemies that are before us. Oh, King David was very good. He took his sling and he twirled it and he slew Goliath. That was great. That was a victory. But when I think of all that God's people have had to endure, we were once slaves in Egypt. God brought us to freedom. And when we were in our promised land, every neighbor at one time or another attacked us with their armies, but God saw us through. And then there were times where the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Seleucids and now the Romans held us captive. But what are they compared to the greatest enemy you and I have to face? The enemy that we have all in common, no matter where you live in the world. The enemy of sin and death. How will that child slay those enemies? not with a slave. The prophet Isaiah says that God's servant will come and lay down his life to defeat those enemies. How can that little child accomplish such a job? But then I'm reminded who that child is. He is the Savior. He is the Son of God. Our Heavenly Father has sent him. And I can't imagine how great the love of the Father is for you and for me. That he would give his only son to die in our place. How great that love is for you and me. And that's what's important in what the angels said to us. Those two little words, for you. A Savior has been born for you and for me. Oh, I know, soon after I'm done talking, some of you will leave, like some in Bethlehem did, smiling, thinking all this as being very quaint. But that's it. And if you do, you will be the poorer for it. But some of you will hear what I have to say. And know that, just as the angels had said it to me, this Savior is for you, your Savior, your Messiah, your Christ. And you won't turn away. You will follow him. You will know that he is your Savior and Lord. And you know that you have a new life in him. And following him will make you the richer for it. Yes, truly, he is the good shepherd. Our shepherd, the shepherd given for us. With the Christmas Creed on page three. I believe in God the Father, creator of all things who sent his Son as my Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by angels, worshiped by wise men, who lived to suffer, die, and rise again. from all sin, death, and the power of the devil. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I to faith in Christ, and by whose continuous work in my heart, I am ever led to lay before the feet of Christ my worship, my life, my love, to live under him as my king, both now and forevermore. Amen. Our response to the birth of Christ.